Hi guys, welcome back to the channel again. Many of you asked me about making an installation of Arch Linux on LVM and this is what I'm doing in this tutorial. Let's get going. So here we go, I booted up the machine and now I'm logging into the terminal via SSH. So we can start the installation. The first thing you might want to do is to check your keyboard layout because the Arch ISO boots up with the US keyboard. And if you don't have one, you might want to change your key map. So let's type in local ctl list dash key maps and then a space and then a pipe symbol. Then we use the grep function to narrow down the search. So for example, I have a Swiss keyboard. The connotation for the Swiss keyboard is ch. So I'm going to type that in and hit enter. And you see, I have a list of results here. And the one I'm looking for is the first one with de underscore ch dash latin one. So we can put this in the system by typing in load keys and then the string we found. So de underscore ch dash latin one, any enter. And now my keyboard works properly. So we can clean up the terminal and let's check for our internet connection. So I'll type in IP space A. And as you can see here, I have an IP ending with 132 because I have my computer connected with an internet cable. If you have Wi-Fi, right now you can type in Wi-Fi dash menu and when you hit enter you'll see a list of networks you can select yours enter the password and you'll be connected to the internet as well so once we have done that we can clean up this and clean up the terminal now we can synchronize the network time protocol so we can type in time date ctl set dash ntp and then true and hit enter and let's clean up the terminal now we have an internet connection, so let's proceed by configuring our mirror list. And for this, we are going to use a program called Reflector, which is not installed in Arch Linux. So we can install this by typing in pacman syy and then Reflector. And hit enter. Proceed with the installation by hitting enter. And Reflector is installed. So let's clean up the terminal and use Reflector to create our mirror list. So let's type in Reflector c for country. I'm going to put in the country where I am now, which is Switzerland. You can, of course, replace this accordingly. Then dash A for the age of the servers. That means since how many hours the servers have been updated. In my case, six hours. You can choose something else if you'd like to, but I wouldn't suggest you go lower than six hours. Otherwise, you might not find any server available. And then dash dash sort because we want to sort the server by speed. That means we're going to give the rate parameter and then dash dash save because we need to save this information in our mirror list directory, which is slash etsy slash pacman.d slash mirror list. And hit enter. Now the mirror list has been created, so we can refresh the servers by typing in sudo pacman dash s y y y and hit enter. And there you go. Now let's clean up the terminal and have a look at our disks. Let's type in lsblk. So you can see here in my system, I have three disks one VDA, one VDB, and one VDC. So the name of your disk might vary. You might have SDA, STV, or SDC. Or if you have an NVMe drive, you might have NVMe 0 and 1 here. So throughout this tutorial, you will replace the name of the disks depending on what you have. Now, before we proceed by partitioning the disk and creating the LVM, let me give you an overview of what LVM actually is. So let me pull out here the slide so that you can see better. There you go. And I'll go full screen here. So this is a small overview on how LVM works. We have our disks here on the bottom. What we need to do here with this disk, we need first to create the partitions we need. So this is a UEFI system. That means I need to create an EFI partition, which is not going to be in the LVM. And it's going to be formatted as a FAT file system type. And then I want to create, for example, on these disks, just one partition because the file system needed, for example, for the home directory, the root directory and the var directory are going to be created in the logical volume and not on the disks itself. So I'm going to create then one EFI partition here and another partition on this disk. I'm going to create just one partition here on this disk and just one partition here on this disk. This is the example because I have three disks, but it's going to work the same way if you have other disks as well. Once we partition the disk like this, we can tell the system to create physical volumes from those partitions. So say, for example, this partition has SDA1 and SDA2. Well, SDA1 is the EFI partition, so this has to be separated. But we can tell create a physical volume from SDA2, and that's going to be here. 
The same way, this is going to be, for example, SDB1, and it's going to be the only partition on this disk, we need to create a physical volume from this SDB1, which is going to be this one. And the same thing is going to be for the third disk. So let's say, for example, SDA1 is 49 gigabytes. The physical volume will be 49 gigabytes. This is taking the whole disk, so this physical volume will be the whole disk. And the same goes for the third disk. Now, once we created the physical volume with the pvcreate command, we can use the vgcreate command to create our volume group, which is going to include all the space we have in our physical volumes. So, for example, if this is 49 gigabytes, this 50 and 50, we are going to have a volume group of around 149 gigabytes. Now, once we define the volume group with the vgcreate command, we can use the lvcreate command to create our logical volumes. And we can say, for example, create a 30 gigabytes or 40 gigabytes root file system, create then maybe a 80 gigabytes home file system, and the rest for the var file system. This is really up to you, it's just a model. Now, the beauty of the logical volume is that these partitions can be resized on the fly. That means you don't have to unmount them and then maybe boot from a live CD to resize them. You can do this on the fly. And also, if one day you have another disk that you want to have to your computer, say a fourth disk, for example, you can create one partition there, create it physical volume, and then we can say extend the volume with the vgextend command to the new partition. And then we can tell to the logical volume by using the lvextend command to extend the space to the whole free space we have available, or to extend maybe just only 10 gigabytes or 20 gigabytes on the file system you want to extend. So LVM is very flexible, and it has also the benefit of taking snapshots. Now, in this particular tutorial, I'm just going to focus on creating a very simple LVM, but if you are interested in knowing more about LVM and how you can extend logical volumes and volume groups, I will do a separate video for that, because otherwise the tutorial will be too long. Now, let me go back to the virtual machine. And as I said before, the first step we need to do here is to partition our disks as we normally would. So this is a UEFI system, so it needs to have a EFI partition. So I'm going to create this in the VDA disk, of course. So to do this, I'm going to use this time GDisk, which is another partitioning tool focused on GPT partitions. So I'll type in GDisk and then the disk name. So slash dev slash VDA, any tensor. So I'm going to create now a new partition. The first partition is going to be the EFI partition. So I'll type in N for new and hit enter. Partition number one as a default is fine. So I'll just hit enter here. I accept the defaults for the first sector. And for the last sector, we define the size of the partition. So I want to give the EFI partition 200 megabytes. So I'll type in plus 200M and hit enter. Now you can see here the current type is Linux file system or A300. We need to tell the system this is a EFI system type. So if we don't know the code for that, we'll type in here capital L and hit enter. And now we can search with the string. So for the string, I'm going to type in EFI and hit enter. And you can see here it's telling us the EFI file system type is EF00. So I'll type in here EF00 and hit enter. And now the partition type has been changed to EFI system partition. So let's proceed now by creating the second partition. So I'll type in N for new and hit enter. Partition number two is fine, so I'll accept the default. I'll accept the default also for the first sector and also for the last sector because this is the LVM partition, so I'll just hit enter here. Now again, we need to tell the system this is a LVM partition and we need to find out the code for that. So let's type in capital L and hit enter. And I'll type in as a search string LVM and hit enter. And as you can see, the code is 8E00. So let's type that in and hit enter. And now the partition type is Linux LVM. And that's about it for this disk. So we can now write the changes to the disk by typing in W and hit enter. And I want to proceed. And the operation is done. So let's clean up the terminal and type again LSBK. And you can see now we have two partitions on VDA. VDA1, which is going to be the EFI partition, and VDA2, which is our LVM partition. Now we're going to do the same to VDB and VDC by just creating one partition there because we don't need to create an extra EFI partition, of course. So we'll type in gdisk and then slash dev slash VDB and hit enter. Now create a new partition with N. Partition number one default is fine. First sector is fine. Last sector is also fine. Now the partition type for LVM is 8E00. We saw that before. And then we can hit enter. 
And now we can write the changes to the disk, so we type pw and hit enter. Yes, I want to proceed. And there you go. Let's clean up the terminal and do the same for VDC. So gdisk slash dev slash VDC and hit enter. Again, and for new, partition number one is fine. First sector defaults fine, last sector defaults fine, and the type is 8E00, and hit enter. And now we write the changes to the disk by typing W and hit enter. Yes, I want to proceed. There you go. Let's clean up the terminal. Type again LSBRK. Now we have our partitions here and they are created. The next step is to create physical volumes. So we need to tell basically the system, create physical volumes from these partitions because we want to use them as logical volumes. So to create the physical volumes all at once, we can use this command, pv create, and then we type in the partition names. So slash dev slash vda2, remember this is the LVM partition, and also slash dev slash vdb1, and also slash dev slash vdc1, and hit enter. There you go. The physical volumes have been created successfully, and we can see them by typing in PV display, and hit enter. And here we have information about our physical volumes. So the size, the partition path, and the UUID. So everything looks good. We can clean up the terminal. Now that we created the physical volumes, we can tell the system to create a volume group from these three physical volumes. So we can do this by typing in VG create or volume group create. We need to give the volume group a name. In my case, I'm going to take it simple and call it VG1. And then we can specify the physical volumes, which are again slash dev slash VDA2 and then slash dev slash VDB1 and slash dev slash VDC1. And then we can just hit enter. And there you go. The volume group one has been successfully created. Again, we can see the volume group by typing in VG display. And you can see here the properties of the group. So as you can see here, the volume group size is 200 gigabytes, which is the sum of my first disk of 100 gigabytes and the other two disks, which are each 50 gigabytes. We have here the UUID, so everything worked correctly. Now let's clean up the terminal. Now that we created the volume group, we can create also the logical volumes. Now it's up to you here how you want to create the logical volumes. For example, if you want to create a 30 gigabytes in size root file system, you can type in, for example, LV create and then dash capital L and then the size of the file system. So 30 G for gigabytes and then the volume name. So VG1, that's the one we just created. And then dash N, because we need to give also a name to the logical volume. Well, if this is the root file system, we could call this, for example, LV root. And then you can hit enter and the logical volume would be created. You can repeat the same thing if you want to create, for example, a home directory and call the logical volume, for example, LV home. And you can repeat the same thing for another file system, like, for example, the op directory or the var directory. It's really up to you how you want to configure the space available in the logical volume. In this example here, I'm just going to create one logical volume, which is going to be the root logical volume, and I will not create another one. So in case that you want to use actually the whole logical volume space available for one partition, how do we do this? Well, that's fairly simple. We can replace this command with dash L, and then we tell the system that we want to use the whole space for this logical volume. So we'll type in 100% free. It's very simple. And then we specify the volume group we have, which is VG1. That's the one we created before, remember? And then again, dash N, and we need to give a name also to the logical volume. So I want to call it, for example, LVM1, and then hit enter. And the logical volume LVM1 has been created. So if we type in LV display, we can see the properties of our logical volume. So it belongs to the volume group one. This is the device path we will need to format the LVM. And here we have the LV size. So everything looks correct. Now we call this logical volume LVM1. That means if one day we insert another disk in the system, let's say a VDD, for example, in my case, I need to create one partition there, which will be VDD1. I'll need to create a physical volume from that with PV create slash dev slash VDD1. And then I could say, for example, to extend the volume group VG1 to that disk. In that case, I would type in then VG extend, then volume group one, which is the name of our volume group, and then slash dev slash VDD1, for example. Once I press enter, I have the extra space of VDD1 in my volume group. 
And then in that moment, I could say, okay, now I want to use this space in my logical volume as well. So I could use, for example, the LV extend command and say LV extend dash L, and then say I want to use the whole space available again on the new disk. I can type in the same thing we typed before. So 100% free, and then the path to our volume group, which is slash dev slash VG1 slash LVM1. So this is how you could extend your logical volume once you create a physical volume from a new disk. Well, in this case, I don't have that, so I just wanted to show you how you can do it. And again, if you're more interested in this, let me know, and I can do a separate video tutorial on that. But for now, let me clean up here this command, and we can clean up the terminal. Now, in case you have any problem to see the volume groups or the logical volume we just created, it's possible you might have to load in memory the emmod module. So to do this, you would type in first mod probe and then dm underscore mod that would be the first command and it enter then you would type in also vgscan to scan for volume groups and it enter there and the last command you would type in is vgchange dash ay and it enter there and then your volume groups and logical volume should be appearing correctly although this should not be actually necessary if you're booting from the arch iso it should actually work out of the box now let me clean up this command and type in again lsblk because we can see here also our logical volumes. So we have here VDA2 where the volume group 1 and LVM1 are and the same goes for VDB1 and VDC1. So everything was created correctly. Now we need to format the partitions and let's begin with VDA1 which is our EFI partition. So let's type in mkfs.fat and then dash capital F32 and then slash dev slash VDA1, and it enter. So the EFI partition, it's been created. Now, one word of advice here, if you're using a bootloader, which is not grub, you will need to actually partition the first disk with an extra boot partition, because the boot partition in that case cannot be into the LVM. As it's written also in the Arch Wiki, at the moment only grub is known to recognize LVM. And so if you're using grub, it's no problem. You can have the boot directory in your LVM. If not, you will need to create a separate boot partition outside of the LVM. Now we formatted our EFI partition. Now let's go ahead and format our LVM. How we do this? Well, it's very simple. We'll type in MKFS for make file system. Then we define the file system type, which is ext4 in my case. And then we specify the logical volume path we saw before, which is slash dev slash VG1, the volume group name, slash LVM1, the logical volume name, and it enter. And there you go, the logical volume is formatted. So let's clean up the terminal. Now tap in again LSBLK. Now we need to mount these partitions. So let's begin with our LVM because this is where the system is going to be installed. So we'll type in mount slash dev slash VG1, again remember this is the path of the logical volume, then slash LVM1, and we're going to mount this under the slash mount directory, and it enter. Now we want to mount VDA1, our EFI partition, into the boot directory, so we need to create first a directory by typing in mkdir slash mount slash boot, and it enter. And now we can mount VDA1 into this boot directory by typing in mount slash dev slash VDA1 slash mount slash boot and it enter. Clean up the terminal lsblk and we can see our mount points. So VDA1 is on boot and our LVM is on our installation directory. So everything looks correctly. Now we can proceed by installing the base packages by typing in packstra and then slash mount. And the packages we want to install are base, our base packages, and then Linux the latest kernel. If you want to install the LTS version, you can type in Linux LTS. But I'm going to go for the latest kernel. And then also Linux firmware contains some extra firmware for your computer. If you have an Intel processor, you can type in Intel U code. And if you have an AMD processor, you can also type in AMD U code. And we need also an editor. In my case, I'm going to install Vim. And I'm going to install also LVM2, which is going to provide some utilities for LVM, and then we can hit enter. So it's going to take a moment here to download and install the packages, and I'll be back when it's done. There you go, the packages are installed, so let's clean up the terminal. And the next step is to generate the file system table where all our mount points are. So let's type in gen fstab, 
then dash capital U slash mount. And then we append this information to slash mount slash Etsy slash fstab and hit enter. Now we can have a look at the fstab file by typing in cat slash mount slash Etsy slash fstab and hit enter. And we have our two partitions here. We have our main partition on the root mount point, which is right here. And also we have our EFI partition. So everything is correct. So let's clean up the terminal and move into the installation and leave the installer by typing in arch dash root and then slash mount and hit enter. So now let's create a swap file by typing in f allocate dash l for the size. I want to make it two gigabytes. So I'll type in two GB and then slash swap file and hit enter. Now we need to give the swap file read permissions. So we'll type in chmod 600 and then slash swap file and hit enter. Now let's make the swap by typing in mk swap and then slash swap file. And we activate the swap by typing in swap on slash swap file and hit enter. Now we need to put the swap file in the fstab file. So let's do this by typing in vim slash etsy slash fstab and hit enter. We go down here to the empty space and create a new line. We'll type in slash swap file. And then the mount point is none. It doesn't have any. The file system type is swap. Options are defaults. And the file system checks are zero and zero. Then we can save the file and exit the editor and we can clean up the terminal and proceed with the localization stuff. First, time zone. Let's type in time date ctl list dash time zones and then a pipe and then a grep function to narrow down the search. So the city closest to me is Zurich. You can replace this, of course, accordingly and then we can hit enter. So I get only one result and this is what I need to put into the system. So I'll do this by typing in ln dash sf slash user slash share slash zone info slash the string we found so europe slash zurich and we are going to link this information to slash etsy slash local time and hit enter now we can synchronize the hardware clock to the system clock so we'll type in hw clock dash dash sys to hc and hit enter there you go now we can work on our locale.gen file so let's type in vim slash etsy slash locale dot gen and hit enter. Now we need to scroll down here until we find the locale we are looking for. I'm looking for English US, which is down here. And I need to uncomment the line which has UTF-8. So I just delete the hashtag and then save the file and exit the editor. And now we can create the locales by typing in locale dash gen and hit enter. Now we need to put this string also into the locale.com file. So we type in echo lang all capital letters equal en underscore us dot utf dash eight and we're going to append this information to slash etsy slash locale dot conf and hit enter same goes for the key map if you change the key map at the beginning of the video we need to put it in the vconsole.com file so let's type in echo key map equal the key map you chose before so in my case it was de underscore ch dash latin one and again, we are going to append this information to slash etsy slash vconsole.conf and hit enter. There you go. Let's clean up the terminal and go to our host name. So let's type in vim slash etsy slash host name and hit enter. Basically, we give a name to the machine. I'll call mine arch lvm. And then we can save the file and exit the editor. And we need to also edit the hosts file by typing in vim slash etsy slash hosts any enter. We go down here to the empty space and we'll type in 127.0.0.1. This is the IPv4 address, a tab and then local host. The next line, the IPv6 address, colon, colon, one, tab, tab, and then local host again. And in the last line, 127.0.1.1, the host name, so in my case, arch lvm dot local domain and then a tab again our host name again in my case arch lvm and then we can save the file and exit the editor now we can give the root user a password so we'll type in passwd and hit enter enter the new password and retype it and now we can install our grub bootloader and some extra packages so let's type in pacman dash s first package is grub then we have also efi boot mgr because it's a efi system then we have also network manager and also network 
dash manager dash applet. Then we have also wireless underscore tools and also WPA underscore supplicant. We can install also dialog and also OS dash prober in case one day you want to install another distro maybe. Two packages for FAT file systems. One is mtools and DOS FS tools. Two development packages. One is base dash devil and Linux dash headers. If you install the LTS version of the kernel is then Linux dash LTS dash headers. They need to match, otherwise they won't work. And I'm going to install also Git, which is going to help us also installing Yay for the Arch user repository. And I want to install also Reflector. I'm going to use it in the installation afterwards. We can install also some packages for our Bluetooth adapters. One is Blues and also Blues-Utils. We can install also Pulse audio dash bluetooth and we can install also our printing system cups and also xdg-utils and xdg-user-dirs for the user directories and then we can just hit enter accept the defaults and proceed with the installation by hitting enter so again it's going to take a moment to download and install and i'll be back when it's done there you go now we can clean up the terminal and before proceeding with the installation of Grub, we need to also change our hooks in the system because we are using an LVM. To do this, we need to edit the mkinitcpio.com file. So let's do this by typing in vim slash etsy slash mkinitcpio.conf and hit enter. Now we need to scroll down here to the hooks section of the file, which is down here somewhere. There you go. And we need to enter here the LVM2 parameter before file systems. So let's enter here LVM2 and a space, and then we can save the file and exit the editor. And now we need to recreate the init RAM FS by typing in mk init cpio dash p and then Linux, which is the kernel we are using. And then we can hit enter. It's going to take a moment to create the hooks. And there you go. Now we can clean up the terminal and proceed by installing grub by typing in grub dash install and then dash dash target to define the target machine is x86 underscore 64 dash EFI. And then we need to define the EFI directory. So dash dash EFI dash directory equal slash boot. You remember we chose this at the beginning and then the bootloader ID with dash dash bootloader dash ID equal grub. And hit enter. There you go. Now we need to generate also the configuration file for grub. So we'll type in grub dash mk config, then dash o. So the output goes under slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg and hit enter. And there you go. So we need to enable some services before we reboot the machine. So let's do this by typing in system ctl enable network manager with capital N and capital M and hit enter. We do the same for the Bluetooth service. So I'll pull up the last command with the up arrow and replace network manager with Bluetooth. And I'll do the same for the cups printing system, pull up the last command and replace Bluetooth with org.cups.cupsd and hit enter. Now let's clean up the terminal and create a new user for the system. So let's type in user add dash m capital G and then wheel and then the username you want and hit enter. So we told the system to create a user with my name, which has a home directory. That's the M option and which belongs also to the wheel group, which is the capital G. We'll configure the wheel group in a second for the pseudo privileges. But before, let's give a password to the user by typing in pass WD and then the username and hit enter. Enter the new password and retype it. Now let's give this user pseudo privileges by typing in editor equal vim and then by sudo and hit enter. Now we'll scroll down to the file until we find this wheel group we talked about, which is right here. We have two of those. Then we need to select the one which has the line all equal all all by deleting the hashtag and then we can save the file and exit the editor. Now we are ready to exit the installation and return to the installer. So we'll type in exit. And we unmount all the partitions by typing in umount dash a and we can reboot our machine by typing in reboot and hitting enter. Before I do that, let me pull up my virtual machine here so that you can see it. 
and I'll put a pin reboot. And here is my virtual machine. It's going to take a moment to boot up. There you go. Here we are grab. So everything was installed correctly. Let's go ahead and boot the system. And there you go. So the LVM is functioning properly. Let's type in my username and the password. So we can go ahead now and check for our internet connection. That's the first step. So we need to type in IP space A. And I have an IP again because I have an internet cable in my computer. If you have Wi-Fi, you can type in NMTUI and hit enter. Go to activate a connection and hit enter. You'll see a list of networks. You can select yours, enter the password, and you'll have an IP as well. And let's log out from here and clean up the terminal. Now we can install Reflector to use the best mirrors for us again in our installation. So we'll type in sudo reflector dash C again, the same Switzerland. In my case, you can replace the country accordingly. Dash A for the age, I'm going to put six hours and then dash dash sort rate for the fastest servers on top and then dash dash save slash Etsy slash Pacman D slash mirror list and hit enter. Enter the sudo password. And now I can refresh the servers, sudo pacman syyy, and there you go. So let's clean up the terminal and proceed to the next step, which is to install Yay. The reason why I want to install Yay, it's because depending on the graphic card you need to install the driver for, you might need to go to the AUR. So let's install Yay first by typing in git clone, and then https colon slash slash aur dot archlinux dot org slash yay dot git and hit enter. Now we created a yay directory here if we type in ls. So we need to go in there. So let's type in cd and then yay and hit enter. And now we can type in make pkg dash si and then package build all capital letters and hit enter. So proceed with installation of the dependency. So I press enter here. And now it's going to take a moment to download and compile the package. So I'll be back in a second. Now we can install yay by pressing enter and yay is installed. So let's clean up the terminal. I'll go back to my home directory and we can proceed by installing our graphic card drivers. So if you have an Intel card, you can type in sudo pacman dash s xf86 dash video dash Intel. If you have an AMD card, you can replace Intel with AMD GPU. And if you have an Nvidia card for most of the new cards, you can replace this package with Nvidia and also Nvidia dash utils and eventually nvidia dash settings now i said for the most recent cards because if you have an older nvidia card these drivers might not work properly so let me log out here from my virtual machine and pull up here this window and this is the archwiki website about an nvidia card so let's scroll down here so what the archwiki recommends is to type in this command here into your terminal to find out which graphic card you have so that you can find the code name. Once you have the code name, you can look at the code name here in the Nouveau Wiki code name page by clicking on this link. So for example, if you have a GeForce 400, it belongs to the NVC zero group. So once you know which card you have and which code it belongs to, we can go back here to the previous page. You can install the appropriate drivers. So for example, as they say here, if your card is this model belonging to this group, you can install the NVIDIA package, which is the one we installed before, or if you install the LTS version of the kernel, you need to install also NVIDIA LTS. If you have, for example, these cards here belonging to these groups, then you need to install the NVIDIA 390XX package from the AUR, and that's why we installed Yay for that. If your card is even older than these ones, then we need to look at the unsupported drivers, which are down here. So if you have an older card, then NVIDIA is not making any more drivers for your cards. However, you can still install the original NVIDIA drivers with this NVIDIA 340XX package from the AUR. The problem is these drivers, although they have a better 3D performance, they don't support the latest version of Xorg, or better said, they support only until Xorg version 1.2. So that means if you want to use the latest version of Xorg, you will have to use Nouveau, which is working also with older cards, but doesn't provide best 3D performance for your card. So it's a compromise you have to do, whether you want to use the latest version of Xorg and compromise the performance of 3D, or you want to have best 3D performance, but compromising the version of Xorg. So this is up to you, the one you want to install. So let's close this up. And I'll go back to my virtual machine here. There you go. 
And this is it now for the base install of Arch Linux on LVM. If you want to now install the desktop environment or a window manager, you can go ahead and look in the channel for those installations. So there you go, this is the base installation of Arch Linux on LVM. As I mentioned in the video, if you are interested in knowing more about LVM and to see more configurations, let me know and I'll do a separate tutorial for that. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did, please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I'll see you in the next one.